Hello, you are listening to sixth episode of SME Banking Club podcast series. We speak about SME banking. My name is Olena Grinuk, and today I'm happy to be joined by Natasha Kiprenidis, Group Head of Digital Banking and Innovation at Hellenic Bank in Cyprus. Uh, Hellenic Bank is a universal Cyprus bank, which is leading the way in technological transformation and banking digitalization. Hello, Natasha, and welcome to our podcast. Hello, thank you for having me. Natasha, my first question is, what is your everyday job looks like? What are the main things you are involved in at the moment? Well, I would say that as the head of digital banking innovation at Hellenic Bank, my everyday job is quite exciting and involves several impactful products, um, building actually several impactful products aiming to disrupt the industry. And examples of uh, these products and what our roadmap looks like Um, I actually joined the bank two and a half years ago, and we kicked off with a mobile-first approach. So that first product uh, uh, we released was a, a mobile banking app mm-hmm. that, uh, that was a groundbreaking product, and it was built in six months. Okay. And uh, from, from there onwards, we uh, built an innovation lab uh, in a short period of time of eight months. Mm-hmm. And... Um, And then, well, uh, the most uh, impactful product that we have out there at the moment uh, is our open banking project. Uh, mm-hmm. We can discuss that a little later. Yeah. Um, and um, in the pipeline, we have a few revamps, such as uh, our web public website revamp. Mm-hmm. And uh, the public website uh, is being revamped to and take a different strategic purpose uh, to be uh, a sales platform central sales platform for the bank and the foundation of the digital bank. Uh, and then another impactful, um, um, let's say, project that we have in the pipeline is the web banking revamp. And uh, we've started with the business web banking revamp. Mm-hmm. So before we start talking more in details about your projects, uh, tell us, please, how in general, innovative ecosystem looks like inside the bank. So you said that you have like innovation labs inside the bank. How people are motivated to do the innovations and how does it look like inside uh, the bank? Sure. Um, so it all starts with uh, placing emphasis on the customer experience. So we have an outside-in approach in everything that we do and the, and the customer is in the center of everything that we do. And this is the culture that we're trying to embed um, across the board. And that's why we have built an innovation lab that aims to promote collaboration, co-creation, ideation. Mm-hmm. And also this is where the digital team sits and works. This is where the digital team lives, in other words, and builds the real products for the marketplace. And um, we also use the innovation lab to promote the bank's new culture. And so the design of this lab, it has a lot of motivational quotes uh, spread across all the walls, um, and it has an inspiring design to it. And and this helps us uh, promote the culture that we're trying to get across, but it also acts as the space uh, through which we collaborate with stakeholders across the organization and, um, and also startups and other partners um, outside of the organization uh, that we are trying to work with. How long did it take you to um, to build the innovation culture inside the bank? And how people are actually motivated? Do they have like KPIs or something? How, how does it work? Well, we haven't built an innovation culture. Um, I mean, it's not something that's finished. Okay. It's something that we started. Uh-huh. So we have started to build an innovation culture across the bank. Mm-hmm. And this started um, before the innovation lab was uh, completed. It's, it's not the innovation lab, in other words, that builds the culture. It's the mindset. And, um, and yeah, and therefore, the, it's the, the approach towards how we do things. So we started doing this about two and a half years ago, and that's when I joined. Mm-hmm. Um But I'm not the one that started it, clearly. This is a top-down uh, initiative. starts all the way from the board and um, is communicated uh, across the bank. Uh, and, um, and therefore, what we're trying to promote is a design thinking approach mm-hmm. to doing things. 
So to re-engineer processes, in other words, and simplify products and build new channels and improve the customer experience, the, the outside-in approach that I mentioned earlier is really a design thinking approach. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. What is your digital transformation roadmap, for, especially for business customers? So you said that you are started with the development of mobile applications. So are you mobile first? Mm -hmm. Uh, bank or online first and what actually the what are the main areas in digitalization for SME customers well uh, again the uh, strategy is to become mobile first okay. uh, but we're still actually branch first you know even uh -huh. online first so the first preference unfortunately of our customers uh, is the branch then is online banking and and third comes mobile banking mm -hmm. um, but mobile banking is a new channel so we introduced it as i mentioned um, early in 2016 uh, and it's uh, it's actually been very successful in migrating customers so basically half of our online banking customers are actively uh, engaged and using the mobile app mm -hmm. and um, And that shows the trend. And also this, um, the mobile app was um, built basically to attract millennial customers to the bank. Yeah. And again, our statistics prove that uh, we have been successful um, in achieving this, in starting to achieve this, because it's an ongoing um, effort. Mm -hmm. so, so I would answer it in this way, basically. And we also asked something about business uh, customers. Um, so the mobile app, um, it, it's uh, basically targeted towards consumer customers, mm -hmm. uh, in, individuals, okay. uh, as, as a first um, release. But as we keep releasing uh, more features, and we have released 13 uh, additional, um, let's say, well, we had 13 additional releases to the app in just a year. Mm -hmm. Uh, the, the next releases will also include uh, features to um, address our uh, business customers. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's great. We'll be waiting. <laughs> uh, let's talk a little bit about your IP first approach. Of, I've read a lot lately on it. So mm -hmm. um, you are opening your IP to, their, to the customers as well. So not saying about Findex or other third parties. I'll give you a small description as to what mm -hmm. we have put out there and then how uh, it will start to work because it's not live yet. I mean, the um, the live environment is not launched yet. Okay. It will be launched soon. Um, and therefore, we have put out there in April mm -hmm. the first increment of our um, open banking uh, project. Uh, let's call it that. And that in involves the API developers portal Mm -hmm. And that developers portal includes the sandbox, mm -hmm. uh, comprehensive documentation, and six open APIs. And these six open APIs are um, PSD2 compliant, or they're according to the PSD2 directive. Mm -hmm. And uh, namely, uh, uh, their transactional, let's say, uh, APIs. We have uh, one uh, about mass payments, mm -hmm. so it helps customers perform mass payments. Um, we have another that's uh, for single payments of all types. Okay. So you can transfer funds um, uh, within the bank or to any bank in the world. And, uh, of course, we have the authentication API. And, um, and basically um, something we call account reporting, and that's uh, really the data of the customer. Mm -hmm. uh, that would flow into a third-party uh, platform app or any other system or service. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's what we have put out there. Now, as to the partnerships, and to answer your question, um, we we have a, a strategy around that, and um, uh, we're just finalizing, actually, uh, so that we can launch the live environment with the governance process. So this governance process is going to be very similar to how you would submit an app, let's say, to a store, a new app that you have built as a developer to a store such as Google Play Store or mm -hmm. iTunes Store. And uh, the, that app would have to undergo an approval process. 
review and approval process. So we would be doing the same. Mm-hmm. And, um, and then uh, we, we have put together an open banking committee as well that will be reviewing uh, these um, products by third parties. So they will be going through a filter. Basically, not anyone uh, can just um, submit something and, and we can guarantee it will be uh, mm-hmm. launched or it will be made, made available. Okay. And then, uh, and then there's a couple of approaches. Uh, we've also put together a marketplace, so uh, that marketplace will be integrated into our at the first stage business web banking channel, mm-hmm. uh, so that we can cross sell these uh, third party products to our existing customers. Um, but uh, that would be in addition to taking something live by third party. So uh, the one step will be to ap- approve and take something live mm-hmm. uh, by a third party. Uh, and then the third party would be able to just uh, promote it any way they, they wish. Um, and the second approval step is to also make it available through the marketplace mm-hmm. of, of the bank. Mm-hmm. And that would help this third party gain access, uh, direct access to our customers uh, and us helping the third party um, cross sell basically it will be uh, cross selling this uh, um, these products. Mm-hmm. So uh, so basically everything goes through a, a filter and is cherry picked. Okay, and when you are planning to go live with uh, IP first approach, I cannot reveal the date at the, at the moment, okay. but um, very soon. But is, um, this year's perspective. Uh, definitely okay. yes. Uh, <laughs> Definitely this year. Mm-hmm. Okay, so tell us uh, a little bit more about the marketplace you're launching. Uh, so we'd like to hear more details. So are you launching it mm-hmm. or it is it is uh, only planned and which bank products will be available for the customers at the marketplace and, and how many third mm-hmm. parties do you have integrated already there? Sure. Uh, so, so to elaborate a little bit, um, first we need to have a strategy, right? So mm-hmm. um, we have put together a strategy as to why we we need this uh, service and why this is an opportunity for the bank. Yeah. Uh, and it's two strategic approaches. One approach uh, is about accelerating the transformation of the bank. So mm-hmm. the, the third party basically would either have to help the, us, the bank, um, with what they have um, produced or put together together. Uh, accelerate the transformation and therefore you will have to be mapped against our digital strategy. Mm -hmm. Uh, And the other um, objective is uh, growth. So the bank is trying to grow um, and it's also trying to grow off the island. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, growth for us is achieved in two ways, is by customer acquisition and hopefully cheaper customer acquisition and new revenue streams. So if what the third party or partner is best to, to call it a partner, um, basically meets any of these criteria, then they're on a good track to um, um, make it to the marketplace as well. Now, the marketplace, um, as I also described earlier, uh, is currently being built uh, into our business web banking um, channel. Mm-hmm. And the reason why we're uh, building it and integrating into the uh, first into the business web banking channel, because then we will also build it into our other channels, so even the mobile channel, so into the mobile app, mm-hmm. in other words. Yeah. Um, so we started with business because the first use case that uh, we are implementing is um, a B2B use case. Mm-hmm. And uh, more specifically is an ERP use case. Mm-hmm. And what essentially means is that uh, customers, business customers, um, by opting to to use the app banking, as we're calling it, channel, um, will be able to have a seamless integration with the bank and uh, transmit payments in real time from within their ERP uh, platform. Mm -hmm. Um, ERP, just to also explain uh, what that means or what it stands for, is an enterprise resource planning a system which is essentially an accounting system. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, so the business basically that's using uh, an ERP system uh, would be able to just uh, remain in that environment and not have to um, export files as uh, traditionally this has been 
the method um, and then import them into a bank's web banking system. And those files, usually they have to uh, conform to certain types of specs. Uh, and, and that takes, um, it's, it's, takes a lot of effort and it's not a very efficient process. So they would be able to transmit payments uh, in real time to the bank mm -hmm. and also be able to track the status of those payments. So then the bank will be able, in other words, to respond back. Um, so through this uh, synchronous API call, in other words, um, there will be a response um, by the API. Mm -hmm. Uh, and it will provide the customer with the status of the transaction. And uh, and on top of that, the, the customer will also be able to uh, have like an auto reconciliation at their end of, uh, of their transactions. So this saves them additional time from exporting other files um, in the form of statements, in other words, mm -hmm. uh, from the bank and importing them into their ERP system. Mm -hmm. and, and all this means that banking becomes hassle-free for mm -hmm. the business and, um, and eliminates uh, all these additional steps by just um, integrating directly with the bank. Mm -hmm. So this is what the customer uh, will get as a benefit. And um, this is happening today to, uh, by some banks. To some extent, banks do have APIs. APIs mm -hmm. uh, are, not, are not a new thing. Uh, open banking is a new thing, or yeah. open APIs by banks are, is a new thing. So uh, instead of uh, creating custom APIs, as this was another way to do this, um, for each customer, uh, by uh, enabling the third party, in other words, the ERP vendor, to integrate with these APIs, and uh, the bank basically to partner with some, uh, I don't know, let's say top ERP vendors that are the most commonly used by our customers, mm -hmm. uh, then it eliminates this need from the customer's end to need to deal with integrators and um, the technical side of things. Mm -hmm. They would just be able to log into uh, the business web banking, navigate to the marketplace, and activate the platform that they're using and just uh, log in. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it is not uh, launched yet, am I right? The marketplace. Uh, this is not launched yet, but okay. again, it uh, it will be launched very soon. At the moment, we're working and building um, all of this mm -hmm. uh, to be launched. Uh, I wouldn't even say months. Okay. <laughs> uh, so yeah, so that helps you understand how yeah. how soon it's going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. And what will be um, actually the triggers for the success of that project? How will you measure it? Uh, the success of this project. Yeah. Well, we would need to have um, uh, an ecosystem built. Mm -hmm. So basically, uh, we feel that um, by investing in building an ecosystem um, of partners, mm -hmm. then uh, that will help our customers have all these options um, so that they can start to use uh, the third party um let's say solutions apps platforms mm -hmm. and uh, and that will start to uh, help us make it a commercial opportunity so our main aim uh, as a bank is to turn open banking into a true commercial opportunity mm -hmm. in the api economy mm -hmm. um, and, and that would mark the success of course we have several kpis uh, um, set already okay. measuring um, at the moment, we're measuring developers, um, things that developers have built, mm -hmm. um, transactions that uh, indicate uh, the, the monetary, in other words, transactions that are being currently tested and performed through our APIs that indicate uh, volumes and values and, um, and the potential. Uh, and at the later stage, after everything will be live, um, well, the real numbers uh, will be able to help us uh, measure success. Can you give us just a little hint? Are among these third parties uh, solutions which will be integrated to the marketplace, are there be something like online lenders, online factoring, leasing or something like these solutions? Uh, no, at the moment we're mainly focused on ERP 
partners. Mm -hmm. So uh, we, we're focused on building the ecosystem with the ERP vendors first. But we're we're uh, having conversations, and in fact, um, a lot of other developers building other apps that are not uh, essentially business um, addressing the business customer. Uh -huh. They're Pro products for everyone, okay. um, and uh, and that's our other uh, strategic um, goal. Basically, uh, the marketplace is really to deliver true lifestyle banking to customers. So uh, it shouldn't even be uh, maintained in the constraints of the banking um, facilities, products, and uh, whatever else. Uh, just because you're using a bank channel to um, perform some transaction or to, um, I don't know, uh, to use self-service mm -hmm. uh, facilities, it doesn't mean that that channel should just offer you um, banking products. So there might be other products by other, from other industries mm -hmm. made available as well. Okay, and traditionally, my last question is about inspiration. What is your source of inspiration to do a better job? Do you look outside the banking sector and which country or maybe some particular company you see as an example to follow? Yeah, I've answered this question for other interviews uh, in the okay. past. And, uh, <laughs> and my answer would be constraints. So um, my... Uh, biggest source, let's say, of inspiration are the constraints because the constraints force you to start thinking in in other directions. So you, you're not comfortable anymore, in mm -hmm. other words. And, and um, by being constrained, you're forced to start thinking more creatively and uh, trying to solve um, complex, I would say, problems. And that may, uh, may helps you uh, bring about all these uh, innovative solutions in the end. Um, and therefore, what you perceive as a limitation um, can actually help you move into other directions so that uh, you can come up with uh, ideas that you wouldn't normally come up with. And then um, I would also say I'm very driven and passionate about leaving my mark and making an impact. So that also helps uh, draw inspiration and um, uh, to deliver the wow factor at the end of the day. Um, now, inspiration can come from anywhere and anything. It definitely doesn't come from the banking sector. <laughs> well, for me, it doesn't, I'm not seeing anything inspiring so that uh, I can say I'm inspired by the banking sector. Uh, so <laughs> currently, I can say I'm inspired by business models of social networks mm -hmm. and uh, the platform economy. And, okay. um, and basically, it would be a great challenge to be able to innovate at scale. Okay. Natasha, thank you very much for that conversation. 